Welcome to Granny's Legacy Patterns. Today we are going to be talking about getting started with solar flare. So I'm Kim Zink. Behind the camera today is Katie Hebblewhite. And our production assistant today is Kari Hebblewhite, who is helping us run and get things and set up. So let's get started with some tips and tricks and making this process fun and easy. So your pattern is uh, all together and in the pattern sheet it will tell how to cut your fabric. So you will have 13 squares that are about 13 and a half inch square. And the first thing I did was I finger pressed in half here and here on each side just finger pressing. You don't want to take your iron because you don't want that pressed in permanently. And then I finger pressed it here and then I went to my sewing machine and I basted a stitch here, 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 and here in about one to two inches. It doesn't really matter. Once we square it up we can re remove any excess stitching. You can do that by hand um, I don't recommend using a friction pen or anything like that because it may not come off easier. But that is our layout guide, is those four quadrants. So you'll want to make sure you get that done somehow, marking that. And we want those markings to stay in completely till we're done with all of our stitching and then we'll square it up. So you don't want to mark them with just out here and and once we square it up, we won't have those markings anymore. So make sure you get them on there enough to stay till we square up. Just one moment. I'm going to zoom in on that so that they can see how you've, what your markings look like. I'm going to do the one right up there. There we go. So you can see that she's basted it with a sewing machine and that line is about two inches long. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Another comment I'm going to talk about is right or wrong side of fabric. I absolutely, working with this, could not detect a right or wrong side of fabric. If you're concerned, you might want to mark it before you cut it with a little dot or something in the corner so that you make sure you know the right side, but I absolutely could not detect a right and wrong side on this fabric. So I decided I wasn't going to get all stressed out about it. So the next step is to get your layout sheet, and this is a full size sheet in your pattern, and you want to tape it down. So I'm going to start taping that on each of the four corners. And then you'll want to, with these marking lines, you've got the marking lines here, your lines. You'll also want to make a little with your ruler and your pencil. Now a number two pencil works best for this. If you bought the Granny's Legacy Notion kit, the pencil would have been included in there. But right in the very center, and not getting too crazy, but just a little plus in the center, we're going to mark a little cross. One way and the other way. And you're being careful to only mark where a wool shape will cover your marking. Yes, and it does state that in the pattern. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, a small Just one second, I'm gonna zoom X in mark that. there. Okay. Okay. And that marks the spot. I'll turn on my light box here so I can see that. That marks the spot through the pattern. And here you'll have your line here you'll want to mark set center and here and so you'll get that all laid out and then I suggest taping this. Um, I find that if it's taped down I have a much better accurate tracing. Some way on top of that I believe so. Because these are going to be important markings for the layout of your block. So now, as I try not to stretch the block as I put these tape this on because I don't want to distort my. Now I'm going to start marking with my number two pencil 
right inside the shapes, like an eighth of an inch inside the shapes, and just sketch out the entire design. Especially the outside petals are important because once you get those outside ones placed, the rest will go easier. But I just take my time and sketch these on just like a sixteenth or an eighteenth of an inch inside. So just kind of sketch those out. And the number two pencil works so well for this process. And even these little ones out here, oh my goodness, it's so easy to do, to lay these out once you have the outline of each of these shapes. And once again, you're being careful, you're not drawing around the edge of the shape, you're drawing around the inside of the edge of the shape. Yes. So that the wool shapes will cover the drawn line. Yes. So I will say this a couple of times, I, for some reason or other, my shape has not covered the drawn line, and I've been able to take the eraser of the pencil and erase that out after my stitching is done. So um, I'm gonna continue on here, and as I do this, I'll talk a little bit. I'll let Katie talk about fusing your pieces on and cutting out the shapes. We do have tutorials on our website on this, but I'll let Katie discuss that a little bit. Sure. Um, so when it comes to creating our wool applique shapes, um, there's all sorts of different methods you can use to create your shapes. However, um, we prefer to use heat and bond light fusible uh, for creating our shapes. And there's various reasons for that. Um, it's not something we're paid to endorse by any means, but we feel that it is a, the, the product works perfect for the application. Um, it has enough glue to hold um, your shape very well and to lock in uh, the weave of the wool, um, but it's not too much glue that it's hard to stitch through. Um, honestly, I don't even notice it's there when I'm stitching. It's not gooey, it's not thick, um, and that's Heat and Bond Light. Heat and Bond does make several other weights of their Heat and Bond. However, Heat and Bond Light is the one that we like to use. Um, so in your pattern, all the shapes are provided, and they are provided for you already reversed. Um, and that is important because um, if they were not reversed, you would have to trace them upside down on your light box for use with fusible because when you use fusibles, it, it um, reverses your pattern and makes everything upside down. So your, your, the shapes provided in your pattern are ready to be traced. You do not need to reverse them. Um, so then you just take and using a fine tip black sharpie marker, um, just trace your shapes onto the fusible as they are drawn in your pattern. Um, they're provided in your pattern on a shape that is the same size shape or rectangle of wool that is in your kit. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about why we use a sharpie marker. Um, if you use a pencil, it will smear and get all over your hands and sometimes even completely rub off by the time you're ready to cut out and you don't have any shapes remaining. Um, so pencil is not the greatest for tracing onto fusibles. Um, a ballpoint pen will smear and get icky and get all over your hand, sometimes transferring to wools if they're lighter. Um, it also sometimes the line diminishes significantly when you fuse it to wool leaving a very faint line for you to cut out on that's been smeared and not necessarily a pretty line. Um, when we use a black fine tip or ultra fine tip permanent marker, um, it works great. The line stays where it's supposed to be. Um, it doesn't go away, doesn't smear. Um, so we just always write in our patterns to use a fine tip permanent marker. Uh, the reason we say fine tip, do you want me to keep going? I'm ready when you're ready. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. finish on fine tip. Uh, the reason we always say to use super fine tip or ultra fine tip or can you show them the one that's in the box? If you ordered the Notion kit, it'll be what came in, but it's it's the one that has a nice fine point, not the marker. Oh, I gotta move my camera. So it has a nice fine point because um, the fatter your point is, the more distorted your shape gets when you trace. Um, and that is important because um, if you use a fat tipped marker, you can get a really fat line. And then if you cut on the outside of that line or the inside of that line, the shape of the size of your shape changed drastically. 
Um, so we recommend using that, um, I think it's called Ultra Fine um, Sharpie Marker. Um, and since it has our name on it, it doesn't even have the label. It is Sharpie, but it doesn't say the size. Um, it works great. And then two, just make sure that you are tracing the line, not outside the line or inside the line. And then when you cut, you cut right on the line as well. Okay, so I have completed tracing just inside the line on all the outside shapes. Inside shapes I just traced. I was not real I'm try to zoom in to too crazy about it. Now, I that. did not trace any line embellishments, only wool applique shapes. The only line embellishment that I, I prefer to trace is the red one, and each square has this, a red line, a straight red line, going to the diamond and I trace just a touch of that just because that is the one line that has to be on the straight when you lay out your block because that when you get it in your quilt will it marks um, direction it marks direction so that's the only one I traced is just right here in this red one and if you don't trace it it's no big deal I would say make sure you get your wool applique shapes uh, traced and nothing else. If if you wanted to trace just a little bit of that red line, you can. So I'm done tracing. I'm going to turn off my light box. Oh, it did have a brighter setting. I thought I was not seeing correctly. And I'm going to remove my tape and we're going to go on to the next step now. Now that I have the line all I'm just gonna. And we've used the caterpillar light boxes. We really like them. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Go ahead. Go to? ahead while I'm um, setting up for next step. They're what they call. They refer to them as wafer thin. Um, I'd say they're less than that, probably about three eighths inch thick. So they're really thin. They're relatively lightweight. Um, some of them have rechargeable batteries. Um, some of them don't, depending. The pink blossom with glass um, pins. Depending on the model that you purchase, some of them have a rechargeable battery, so you don't even have to have it plugged in all the time. Um, they have three light set, two or three light settings. Um, so depending on what you're tracing and what you're doing, you might discover that low is better than medium or high. Um, and we just like them because it's a really, a really bright, bright light box that doesn't take up a ton of space. Um, we do carry them on our website. They are pretty economically priced for the quality of the product. Um, and I do believe we have. Uh, two models, the one that plugs in, and then uh, once again, we also carry the battery one that has a chargeable battery. So, Okay, so now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up so Katie can go so it, you're looking at it right side up now. So we're going to look at this process right side up. I'm going to put this for you. Should we move that away or is it okay yeah, just it setting it? It can stay there. Are you sure? It's, it's fine. Okay, sure. So, we have... Now I put this the my piece that is ready for the wool applique on a wool mat. I prefer a wool mat because I can iron into it. I also can just pick it up and take it to my ironing surface. I can work at it on a table where it's more comfortable and then I can move. We have pre-cut all of our shapes and Kari has lined them up in numerical order which will make it so much easier and when we numbered them we numbered them with the number that you will start with so number one and on our sheet here number one is this blue right here uh, Katie are you gonna come around this way so everything's right side up or oh I thought you were gonna flip it upside down okay to so that it's so you want to work over there yeah, I thought okay. that's what you said you were gonna sure that's good okay so number one I'm gonna turn this around then so I'm not trying to mirror image the shape but here we go so we're going to start with number one over here and dotted lines mean that something overlaps that so it's underlapping under so keeping in mind when I lay this out that my lines are a little bit smaller than the piece so it covers it I'll lay that on there and I like these glass head pins for this because I can iron right through them so I'll start laying out so one and then number two and it's so helpful when your number your pieces are all numbered already and I can kind of I went underneath there so I'm just gonna kind of look at that and that overlaps that so that goes on there and we just keep working until you have all the pieces laid out number three is this little 
do that up here and you can see I have just exactly where it's supposed to go traced out. So by taking the time to do that tracing, you can be assured that everything's going to line up just like it's supposed to. And then number four is this purple one here. Blurple, we call that. So, Kari, if you could come in and maybe take the back off of them as we go, that would be a, a great help. Would you do that? So number five, if you could get number five peeled off. So number five is right here at the top. I'll let my lovely assistant be the paper peeler and we'll place that. Keep in mind that your wool applique should be covering your lines now. Number six is the purple one out here. And try not to peel the sticky stuff off of them. Yeah, just the paper. Yep, you'll want to leave the and it looks to me the picture shows that that one goes under like that. So this one is and seven. number seven. Thanks, Kari. Glad you're here to help today. We have a snow day here in Minnesota. So I have a lovely assistant that I wouldn't normally have. So working on solar flare now in the so number eight. This is, yeah. Let's see, number eight is this little green piece over here. So we'll. And this is block number there. one that we are laying out. This is block number one. And I try to keep my pins as flat and horizontal as possible so that when I steam this down, they're not in the way, they're there's, not sticking up. There's nine. Nine. Nine goes right up here, and you'll see when you're doing this that those pencil layout lines are going to be a great advantage to getting these on there. Number 10 is... I'm working on 10 right now. What color is it? Oh, the yellow. Oh, fun. <laughs> Get to do something fun, finally. Huh? So you kind of have to guess on that one, and that's when you're going to find out why it was so nice to have those layout lines Here's, already in place. Here's 11, which is a yellow color. Okay, another yellow. Okay, over here on number 6. And number... This is 12. 12. That's that little blue guy that goes here on top of yellow. I think that's upside down. Upside there down. Go. There we go. Kind of like a little puzzle. It is like a puzzle, isn't it? You would like this because the puzzles are your favorite, huh? Didn't we just start one last night, Mom? Mm -hmm. I just start a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Okay, what number are we now? 13. 13, okay. That one goes over here. And you'll see why I kept tracing all the inner sides too, because it kind of helps you with a, a little bit of the layout when you see the inside pieces too, not necessarily just the outside. Okay, 14 is purple. Okay, that goes over here. Sometimes I don't want it to stick up too far for my iron. Fifteen. What color is that? Purple? Okay. That goes up here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And I always like to have at least two pins on some of these pieces so they can't twist and go the wrong way. If you just put one pin, this bottom could twist or you'll notice I'm doing two pins on the pieces so it kind of keeps them from twisting on me. What, 16. Number 16? Okay. That one goes over here. And 
and I know that this green paste piece has to overlap it so it's got to go underneath that green a little bit so I'm making sure that Pull that in a little bit. Okay, 16, what's next? 17, I'm peeling that tag right now. Not right now. Oh, yay, we get to do that sunny little center of the flower. <sighs> okay, we'll put that here. And you want to make sure that it covers everything. If it doesn't cover everything, make sure you go back and move some pieces down or Make sure that you don't have any yellow fabric sticking through or areas where it's not covering nicely. Here's an 18. 18. Well, okay, that's that little green guy right here. And got the pencil line to show me where to put him. Okay. And 19 is on the other side just like it. I like peeling the backs off the big ones. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you were here. This made it much easier. So if you've got a little snow girl to help you peel the backs off, it goes much faster. 20 is this big green piece here. Okay, now I see a little area that I want to change on number 18, and I'll show you what I mean. So my 18 is coming up here too far, so I'm going to adjust that and fix it so that it's in the right position. There we are. Okay, and 21. And 21 will tuck right under 20. And I don't know if the camera is picking up how easy that is mm -hmm. when the pencil lines are there to yep. put the puzzle pieces in place. And 19 needs to be adjusted a little bit because I didn't get it all the way in the right position. There we are. Now I can look at my, did I miss a lose a pin? It's back there on that corner. Oh, here it is. You can take a look and make sure everything stayed where it's supposed to stay. And now we have some little ones on the outside, but I think you get the picture of how you proceed with this process. Get everything on, and then you'll want to take a pressing, a fair pressing sheet and your iron. Now we're going to just pretend this is all on and you'll cover it with your pressing affair and with a really good steam iron. Steam, steam, steam. Get it all stuck down and then remove your pins and steam one last time because you don't want to steam so much that you steam little holes in your wool from your pin heads. So the first time through just get everything uh, stuck tack, tack down, that's a good word for it, and then remove all your pins and then really give it a really good steam, really steam it up. And your, pro your piece will be all ready for its embroidery. And the embroidery, you could just follow along on the pattern with that, and that will show you how to do it. Now, when it comes to squaring up your piece. I accidentally peeled 22. 22, okay, thank you, Kari. We'll poke it on there so we don't forget it. I just forgot. Just Which way does it go? This way? 22, it goes like right here. Yeah. Right there. That way? Okay. So I'll poke, I'll put it on there so we don't lose 22. Okay. So now we're going to move on to you've got all your embroidery done, your press and seal process. Once you get all of the wool applique, applique then you will um, trace the doodads on press and seal and make them fit. So the little red, you, you'll kind of move it around and get it set in there just right. The little star around the red, you trace that and put that on. So your press and seal, you may not do the whole thing, but do I you, would I would do portions of it. If you um, get the big tracing sheet out here again, mm -hmm. um, you can see there's a little star on the tracing sheet or oh, the transfer sheet or whatever we called it. 
Thank you. So you can see right there, there's a little star. And that just shows um, that that is a portion that you can trace all of that, the little um, radiating lines and that little starburst onto press and seal. Um, and then you'll, you'll embroider that. Yep. And embroider it, all the detail lines right through the press and seal and then remove your press and seal and it's perfect. And we have tutorials on our website on using press and seal. So we mm -hmm. won't go that into that today. That would be redundant. And we recommended um, doing the stem and vine over here like that. See there's two stars there doing those stems. Mm -hmm. And then into the triangle, the vine mm -hmm. and the stems. And we'll talk about as assembly now to mm -hmm. putting on your triangle. So when it comes to cutting your triangle, um, in the cutting directions it'll say you need a 18 inch square so you'll, be, you'll have cut an 18 inch square of your fabric. And these are the setting triangles because we want a straight grain on the edge. That's why we choose to start with the 18 inch square. So you have your 18 inch square and you cut from corner to corner and corner to corner. And these are your setting triangles. And you will need eight of them. So do two 18 inch squares and it's almost easier to cut them both at the same time. Cutting through two layers is always easier than cutting through one layer. And I'm going to need one here, so I'm going to leave one out. And the next thing you're going to do when you get all your embroidery done, so here's your sneak peek at block number two. This is your block number two, and you can see I have my basting stitches here. You can hand baste that if you're not a baster. But, um, and you will square this piece up to 11 and a half. So I have a 12 and a half inch ruler here. And half of 11 and a half is five and three quarters. So I will use my five and three quarter inch mark here. And I will lay this, I'm gonna turn this this way so I can cut this way. Okay, I want five and three quarters to be on my gray lines. Five and three quarters, five and three quarters, and five and three quarters. That's how I'm going to square up this block. So five and three quarters, and I'm gonna just take that edge off. Because I'm squaring this up to 11 and a half. So this is your cutting directions on how to cut things up. And then in the other instructions, let me look here. After you're all done with your embroidery, it will say square up block to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So five and three quarters is half of 11 and a half. Five and a half and a five and a half is 11 and five and three quarters. So I cut right there, and these big square up rulers are so handy for this. Now I want to have five and three quarters on the other line, which I should have done first. It really didn't change. Make sure I'm in the right spot. I should have had my ruler at the five and three quarters here also. So I've got five and three quarters here, 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 and here. So I'm gonna take off that side, and I'm gonna take off this side. And I'll turn it because I am sitting in an awkward position. And the cutter pillar does come with a cutting mat too. Um, it's 11 and a half. Eleven and a half. I've got myself all confused here. You won't be confused at home, but I confuse myself. 
So 11 and a half. So I've got 11 and a half here. It helps if you get your thing all on one mat. I'm and one thing you can always do too that I usually do is I usually take a, mar a marking pen and, and mark, mark it, it first. That way you um, know you're correct. You can visually see that you're correct before you go uh -huh. and start cutting. An iron erase marker. Yep would be a great asset. You've got one. Or an airy erase even, that purple airy, airy erase. Airy erase, that's yep. what I was thinking, yes, thank you. And instead of cutting the first time, just draw your line. That way, if you were to have gotten off, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be a half inch short on one side or something mm -hmm. like that. So, so that's how you'll square up your block. And then um, this block needs still needs its um, half score triangle. So once you have that, and I believe that will come right here, so you'll lay your half square triangle on there, or quarter square triangle, sorry. You stitch a quarter inch seam allowance here, and then with press and seal, you'll do your your stitch, your stitch other stitching on this after it is sewn on here. So you'll sew this on, create your press and seal design, and stitch through it for your press and seal design. So that is a few hints for working with the design and pattern on the solar flare, block one. So if you don't have a 12 and a half inch square up ruler, those are awesome. You can go to our website and um, I believe we can send that with your next block. Mm -hmm. So you could do all your block and just leave the setting triangle until you get your 12 half square triangle. Any other products that you need, be sure and give us a call or go on to our website. We have the rulers, the mats, everything to make your job go easier and accurate. So thank you for joining us for Solar Flare today.